Ah, uh, okay. Uh, let's start the afternoon session. The, the first talk will be given by Professor Hidehiko Komatsu, who is the uh, leader of the former innovative area of a SITSCAM project 10 years ago, yeah, we, when we were young. <laughs> and then, um, no, a well-known neuroscientist, uh, electrophysiologist, who was st studying uh, visual cortex, particularly in the ventral stream of object recognition and color perception. And then, in the context of this symposium, he is well known as the pioneering work about the neurons that are selectively sensitive to sit scan or material perception. And then the talk will be given by uh, today, uh, he is talking about the neural representation of a material in the visual cortex. Please start. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the uh, introduction. So uh, today I'll talk about neural representation of materials in the visual cortex. So this is uh, the uh, poster of our symposium. And uh, you can see uh, a lot of sheet scan in the uh, nice pictures. For example, in this picture, uh, you can see that uh, this is uh, water. Uh, this, is, this road is made of wood. And uh, this is probably made of grass. And the back is grass. And uh, uh, these are bamboo. And this is probably made of bronze. So we can easily recognize what material an object is made, made of, even though we understand what it is, actually is. And the uh, first study uh, to investigate which brain area is involved in material perception was done by a group of Kanto and Gutel. And this is a, a cerebral cortex of uh, the primate, macaque monkeys. And there are two uh, major pathways in the cerebral cortex, visual pathway. One uh, starts from primary visual cortex, V1, and goes to the posterior parietal cortex. This is called dorsal pathway. And this is involved in uh, motion perception and special uh, recognition. And uh, another pathway, which goes from V1 to the inferior temporal cortex, or IT cortex. This is ventral higher area, is called ventral visual pathway. And this pathway is related to visual recognition of objects. And Kanto and Gutel found by uh, function MRI in human subject that strong activation during attention to size properties occurs in the occipotemporal areas, ventral higher area around collateral sulcus, fish homizales. This suggests that um, ventral pathway is clearly involved in material perception. Then we started uh, our own study to examine how is the material information represented in the brain. Uh, so uh, this is uh, done uh, by human subject. And uh, we used uh, computer graphics images of nine material categories, like metal, stone, leather, ceramic, bark, fabric, grass, wood, fur. And to control all the difference in the shape, we used the uh, same uh, contour shape and rendered such property uh, using computer graphics techniques. So we presented these images one by one to the subject and measured brain activity by function MRI. And to know how the material information is represented in the brain, we employ the method called representational similarity analysis. Let me briefly explain the uh, logic of this analysis. So for example, we measure brain activity from uh, several areas. And in each area, uh, brain activity is represented by the activities of multiple boxers. And we can get a pattern of activity boxes for each material. And we can quantify the distance between material one and material two with regard to the brain activity by some measure. Likewise, uh, we uh, compute the material dependent properties for each material. In this study, we focused on two properties. One is uh, simple image features, like spatial frequency orientation, luminance, and color. 
Another is perceptual impression, like uh, glossier, less glossier, or cold uh, or warm or something. And we can quantify, we quantify the distance between materials for or these image features and also for possible impression. And finally, we compare the uh, distance, uh, the, compare the distance obtained for brain activity in some area and this uh, distance obtained for material dependent properties. And we to, to know which one is more similar to uh, brain activity in uh, each area. So to quantify the perceptual impression, we used uh, uh, what is called SD method, and so we used 12 uh, adjective pairs, like matte, glossy, colorful, colorless, opaque, transparent, simple, and complex. So each material is represented in a coordinate, uh, as a coordinate of 12 dimensional space. And we can uh, compute this Euclidean distance between materials. And we, we quantify the distance between materials as a form of matrix. So something like this, we quantify the distance between ceramic and metal. And the value is plotted here, like this. And then <coughs> we repeat the same procedure for uh, the pair of glass and uh, ceramic, and distance is plotted here. And we repeat this procedure for all pairs of materials and construct distance matrix. Then we compare distance matrix obtained for brain activity and distance matrix obtained for material dependent properties. So let me show you the result. So this is a, a distance matrix for based on image features. And the color represent the uh, distance. So darker color indicates a uh, short distance, means uh, the similar with regard to image features. So in this case, the stone and bark have similar uh, image features it's because it's dark. And this is a, a, a brain activity obtained from early visual cortex, early areas, area V1 and V2. And this is a, a distance matrix obtained uh, based on brain activity in this area. And we compare this pattern with uh, matter dependent properties. And when we compare brain activity in V1, V2 with image distance matrix obtained by image features, it's very similar. And uh, to quantify the similarity, we compute the correlation coefficient. And it's highest in early visual area and gradually gets smaller in the higher area. So another measure, a perceptual impression, the distance must be based on perceptual impressions like this. This is uh, quite different from the one obtained from uh, image features, simple image features. And this is a pattern obtained uh, from the brain activity in higher ventral area, Fujimujana's collateral sulcus. And this pattern is more similar to the uh, distance matrix obtained by perceptual impression. And the correlation uh, between brain activity and uh, perceptual impression is low, very low, in early visual area and get higher, and it gets highest in the ventral higher area, which forms the collateral sulcus. So clearly, the transformation occurs between early visual area and the higher ventral area along the ventral visual pathway. And interestingly, the adjective pair, when you look uh, carefully the adjective pairs we have used, some of the adjectives are not non-visual adjectives, like smooth, rough, dry, wet, cold, warm, soft, hard. These are more like haptic adjectives. But even if we use only these uh, adjective pairs, the result is basically the same. So this suggests that uh, ventral high area, this is visual area, but much more aspect of impression of uh, materials are represented. And material perception occurs cross-modally, and we can guess how we would feel it if touched. Rough, smooth, hard, soft. This is very important nature of material perception. And our results suggest that ventral high visual areas represent materials much modally. So how this occurs is the next question. How is much modal representation of materials formed? And clearly one clear uh, 
uh, speculation is by experience. But to test this possibility, it's difficult to conduct in humans because humans have a lot of experience in all these materials. So we use primates, uh, macaque monkeys, this experiment because uh, some materials like metals are familiar to monkeys because uh, a cage is made of metal and the body is covered by fur, but many other materials, monkeys are not familiar. So we prepare uh, real objects made of uh, nine different material, uh, material categories, uh, rod shaped object. And so uh, let monkey to see and grasp, attach and grasp the object for several months. And we measure uh, brain activity by function MRI before and after this visual haptic experience and compare the brain activity obtained before and after the, uh, this visual haptic experience. So if there's some change, so uh, <coughs> we hope that there may be some change in uh, if the brain activity is uh, much more representation uh, reflect experience, there should be some change in brain activity and that may correspond to the uh, haptic impression. And this is the result. So we quantify the distance matrix for passive impression. Unfortunately, it's hard to ask monkeys to answer uh, the impression. So this is based on human answer. And this is uh, a brain activity in some area. And this is a uh, uh, correlation, correlation between this matrix and this matrix. And before, this is a comparison before a visual haptic experience. And it's generally low, except for before it's slightly higher, but it's generally low. But this pattern dramatically changed after uh, the visual haptic experience. So after the experience, the uh, Brain activity in posterior IT showed high correlation with the passive impression. So, visual haptic in experience induced some change in ventral higher area and make it more similar as the brain activity pattern uh, represent uh, uh, in a way more similar to uh, haptic impression uh, of materials. So to summarize up to this point, V1 represents low-level image features and are stable with respect to visual haptic experience. And representation in ventral high visual area, PIT, here can be modified by long-term visual haptic experience. And the representation about materials in PIT reflects visual haptic association established by the experience. Then the next question is, so here, uh, as I said in the previous slide, <coughs> at the start point, low level image features represented, and the higher ventral area, passive impression is represented. What happens in between? What transformation occurs in between? So we focus what happens in the mid level area, V2 and V4. And we focused on the uh, texture because. Many material categories have characteristic textures, like we can easily guess this is bark, this is fur, this is fabric, and this is sand. Because visual system, uh, so, so visual system may be analyzing image statistics for or texture perception. The question is, what kind of image statistics used in the visual system? An important hint comes from the study of uh, the uh, texture synthesis. Especially, we are interested in the uh, uh, texture synthesis algorithm proposed by Paul and Simon Cherry because the algorithm uses the filters, which is very similar to the receptive field, uh, which actually exists in early visual system. So this is a schematic illustration of uh, the algorithm. Uh, Posture Samuels algorithm, uh, simply uh, indicated as PS algorithm. Uh, this is all the image, input image, and here is uh, linear filters, so, so sensitive fre special frequency and orientation. So this 
this gabo like filter and this uh, uh, is very similar to the receptive field of simple cells in P1. And also, uh, after passing uh, this rich filter, the, uh, they pass through the <coughs> energy filter. This is very similar to complex cells in P1. So these are the filters which exist in the <coughs> RBD area. And in their algorithm, they compute the uh, cross-correlation and the auto-correlation and use as the higher order image statistics to synthesize textures. And they are categorized in several groups, like linear cross-position, linear cross-scale, and the energy cross-position, energy cross-scale, and energy cross-orientation. By the way, spectra means uh, output of energy filters, and this simply <coughs> uh, include spec uh, special frequency and orientation component. This is a so low-level image feature, and like we want output. So we have others. Maybe mid-level visual area extract these higher order image statistics to represent textures. And actually, a previous study by Freeman and Motion's group have suggested that V2 neurons are sensitive to higher order image statistics. So they employed and uh, they used these images, uh, te natural textures, and they uh, synthesized textures using polygon simultaneous algorithm and they call this as naturalistic textures. And they also used uh, output of linear filters, uh, spectral features. And so, so uh, images only have uh, same spectral features. So special com frequency and orientation component are the same as this one, but other higher order image statistics are not included. They call this V1 match noise image. And so they compared the responses of V1 and V2 neurons to naturalistic and V1 matched noise images and found that in V1, average response is same between naturalistic and V1 match noise images. On the other hand, in V2, there's a clear difference. Naturalistic image evoked much stronger responses than V1 match noise images. So this suggests that V2 neurons, so higher order image stat statistics are, are extracted at the level of V2. So we try to examine uh, whether our uh, responses on mid-level areas uh, are sensitive to uh, a higher order image statistics and represent, uh, can be explained by the, these <laughs> statistics. So we prepared uh, textures and uh, uh, synthesized image based on potential simultaneous algorithm or uh, based on eight different mat materials. And recorded neural activity from V2 and V4, and analyzed response to textures images. But there's difficulty to conduct this kind of experiment. experiment. That is, the dimension is so high. In the, uh, there's so 740 parameters in the uh, posture assignment algorithm. It's so high. And also, uh, there are many possible images. Uh, so it's very difficult to map the texture space to find the optimal stimulus. So to overcome uh, this difficulty, we constructed a low dim dimensional texture subspace, seven dimensional space, and also employed adaptive sampling procedure to <coughs> rapidly find uh, optimal stimulus. And this, I, I don't have time to go into detail of these procedures, but it really works well. And let me show the result. Uh, so this is an example response of an example V4 neuron that selectively responded to texture stimuli. In this case, we presented 400 texture images to this <coughs> neuron. And these are the 10 best stimuli which evoke the strongest responses to this neuron. And they have similar appearance like wood. And these are 10 worst stimuli uh, which evoke the least, smallest responses to this neuron. They also have similar appearance, like, I'm not sure, uh, fine we laser or uh, water, whatever. So uh, they, uh, <coughs> this is actually uh, <coughs> uh, gives some support that uh, our procedure worked very well. And so neurons in V2 and V4 preferentially responded to textures with similar appearance. And so, so we analyzed 
whether the responses can be uh, represented by a combination of texture parameters, higher dimension statistics. So this is sim uh, we employ simply linear regression of neural responses by VS statistics. And we found that vast majority of neurons in V2 and V4 can be significantly represented by linear combination of higher uh, of PS statistics, PS parameters. And also we also found that each neuron is sensitive to only a small number of parameters. So this uh, slide shows so horizontal axis indicate uh, a neuron recorded from V4, and the vertical axis corresponds to the different classes of uh, statistics. So green color uh, indicate spectral features. This, this, this is simply uh, low level image features, but other neurons are sensitive to oh, uh, the brightness of each pixel indicate the weight, the magnitude of weight of each parameter. And as you can see, each many neurons are sensitive to higher order image statistics, and but each neuron are sen sensitive to only a small number of parameters. And when we compare the result uh, V2 and V4, basically the uh, overall pattern is very similar between V2 and V4, but there are some interesting differences. One is that neurons sensitive to spectral features are more frequently observed in V2. And also, uh, neurons sensitive to energy features are, are frequently observed in V2, but uh, it's very rare in uh, sorry, uh, frequently observed in V4, but uh, very rare in V2. So this suggests that some uh, gradual development or, or extraction of higher order image statistics uh, goes on across, uh, along the ventral visual pathway. And finally, uh, we examined whether the, uh, the neural responses uh, uh, contribute to the uh, dissemination of uh, texture and noisy images. And we quantified the, uh, the contribution of each class of, class of, uh, of uh, high uh, image statistics on the discrimination between uh, natural texture and noise noisy images. And the result obtained in V4 is very similar to the result of psych physics obtained by Freeman's group. So this suggests that uh, uh, mid-level neurons are really uh, uh, related to the uh, texture perception. So to summarize, ventral pathway is important for material recognition. And early visual areas represent low-level image features, and visual haptic impression of materials are represented in IT, and this is acquired through simple experience. And mid-level areas extract image statistics useful for material categorization. And these works were done in collaboration with these people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, questions? Um, I'm thinking about the uh, representation of the material properties and, and that result, and I'm wondering whether you've considered exploring a wider range of stimuli where, for example, the shape of the stimuli might change or the illumination where the material property is kept constant and uh, what would happen under those circumstances. You mean, uh, so, so uh, in, in other sense, you, uh, you're asking the, uh, whether the, the independent shape and uh, materials are independently represented in the Yes, way. or whether it matches the changes you see in perception for those wider range of manipulation that one could imagine. Yeah, clearly, the, uh, as you know, the P, uh, IT represents shape. Uh, and also, we have uh, previous reports that uh, they they represent a uh, uh, size property like growth. And I, we, we guess other, other uh, properties like transparency uh, and translucency may be represented in the, this area. And uh, actually, we don't know how they are combined, but uh, it's uh, very likely that uh, some 
there's some combination, and uh, that uh, uh, if, especially when the uh, shape affects uh, 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 there's interaction some, sometime between the such property and shape, and in that case, clearly, the representation should be mixed, I guess, that is my guess, but, uh, that is an uh, uh, important question for future study. Any other questions? <coughs> okay. uh, can I give a uh, somehow technical question? Uh, you have shown uh, a difference in, in, in a s to the regard to the sensitivity to different image statistics between V2 and the V4 neurons, and then you show that yeah. Uh, the next two next slide, I think. Yeah. Uh, in the what do you think about the differences in, in the differential sensitivity to energy related statistics between V2 and the V4? Do you have any opinion? Do you mean this? No. I mean yellow, orange, and then red kind of part, and then oh before okay. neurons are sensitive to energy related statistics. So your question is related to what, how, what, what, should, what computation should be necessary to uh, extract this, uh, and uh, this may be, this result s so suggests that uh, this computation requires uh, 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 more uh, computation, I mean, uh, so linear uh, uh, portion, linear scale is extracted in V2, and uh, as a result is used to compute the energy statistics, but uh, actually, uh, I think in the looking at uh, this the algorithm, it's not like that, but so, it's, uh, it's already computed as uh, art, uh, output from uh, uh, complex cells. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that, that is an interesting uh, uh, question, which I didn't think clearly, but, uh, um yeah yeah actually it's uh, so I, I don't know actually what what's going on but uh, it's it gives uh, some hint There's maybe that that result itself may give hint about uh the extraction how the extract, uh the, these features are extracted in these different areas thank you i see thank you any other short questions do you have Okay, okay, thank you very much, thank you.